Well, hi, and thanks for joining me once again here in my shop. And I'm just about to start on this Panasonic all-in-one record player radio combination here. So I've done a number of Panasonic things in a row here. Just It's just a coincidence. And uh, let's, let's check this guy out. Okay, so it's got a BSR turntable in it. Strange, a Japanese radio, but British turntable. We're going to do the standard. What the heck is going on with that? Oh my god, that's quite a warp in this. Sounds like the glue that's holding it down has given up the ghost there. Wow, it's really got a warp here. So, we're going to probably do all the basic maintenance. We're going to investigate why only one channel coming out of the cartridge. And uh, maybe we'll take a look at the AM radio. See if we can sort out why there's no output from the radio. So quite a few things to work on here. Uh, let's put it through the test though. Volume. Power is off. Set on AM. Tuning dial works. And everything else in the middle. Power to it. We'll switch it on. Here we. Oh, wait a minute. We're not going to hear anything like this, are we? Hold on. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Interesting. Another Panasonic, and it requires uh, phono plugs for the speakers. So, a last Panasonic one I did, I made up a phono plug speaker wire. Handy. So let me hook up the speakers here and we'll... Okay, so I got the two speakers connected here. Volume down. Oh, power's off. Power on. Saw the lights come on. They seem to come on bright, go dull, and come back on again. That's my imagination, maybe. And we're on AM. We hear nothing. What did I do? I plugged this in the wrong spot in the back. Definitely not. Oh, that's right. AM was very low output. Okay, so we'll go. We'll go to FM. There we are. Okay, no problem there. AM. Yeah, turn the volume right up full. Can you hear it? Barely. So there's something funny going on with the AM side. That sounds like a tricky problem to sort out too. Phono. What is going on with that? One channel coming through. But on the radio, both channels were working. So it could be everything from this cartridge only produces signal on one side. Connection's bad. Wire's bad. Connection up inside is bad. Or the, uh, I don't think there's a preamp in here. So we should kind of expect the amplifier to be working fine if the radio comes through it okay. Of course the AM doesn't come through okay either. Now I think that's a different problem. The AM doesn't come through on both channels. FM comes through on both channels. That pretty much proves the amplifier is working fine. And uh, this guy comes through on one channel. Just for interest's sake. <laughs> this is so similar to the last... The last... Uh, player. Look, there's the spring. And there's the other spring. 
the one that's going off this arm here, the one I found out the hard way, if you watch the last video, there it is, coming around the back. Okay, a lesson learned. I never noticed that spring before. But that gives us the kind of idea of what kind of spring we need. Yeah, to get the right weight. Okay, let's make this record player go around. I'm going to stick this back in here. Just for safekeeping. Okay, here we go. It's on 33 and it's turning at about 16 speed. Mechanism's working. Ooh, that didn't sound too good. nice and loose. There's the pickup. The record player is picking up speed. So that that's, uh, implicates a couple of uh, things like the motor bearing, perhaps the platter bearing. Let's turn it off here. That just turns it off, off, off. So platter bearing seems good. Probably the motor bearing that's that's bad, so let's go ahead and pop them up here. A little tricky though. get underneath and uh, flip the little locky things if they're locked. Let's see. Cut the power. Yeah, you know what? Let's take the platter off first. That's a better place to start anyway. Uh, that's glued down pretty good in most places. Wow. It looks like there's an E-clip under there, and I cannot get at that E-clip with this here, or at least with this center, center piece here. What to do there? Looks like this has never been lifted before. Now I'm going to have to put new glue in on this to hold it back down. Otherwise, I think the record's going to be kind of funny on here. Okay, so let's just try taking it off. I've never seen a platter that light. A lot of times you take a, a platter off, it weighs a ton. And that provides huge momentum in the platter and stops uh, wow. And I suppose flutter, which is uh, rapid variations in the speed of the platter. This guy has got a little bit of weight to it. Not a lot though. Okay, and here's the usual stuff. Feels very good. The 
these metal plates are uh, sticky. Not moving as freely as they should. The motor. So I'm turning the motor and seeing how much it takes to turn it and how long it continues spinning. It's not bad. So where is this thing laboring? Yeah, this feels good too. And the surface here uh, does not feel. Yeah, it feels very good. It's very flexible. Yeah. <laughs> well, offhand, I can't really put my finger on. You know, what? I think there's moisture all over this thing. That's moisture or oil. And the reason there'd be moisture is it was sitting in my car trunk for a couple of days and the temperature outside was uh, minus two this morning. So I brought this in my house. It was frozen. And uh, I tried to put it in a place where there'd be some moving air would dry it out. And I think it did. Warm it up a bit. Because I know it's going to collect condensation right away when you bring it into a house. So maybe that's what this is. Here, take a look on the close-up camera here what I'm talking about. What's he talking about? He's talking about those little moisture on the black washer. Funny, just the black washer. Why not everywhere? So I don't know what that is. It's on every one of these. Oh, look at that spindle on the motor. Down. Yeah, it looks like moisture all over it. Yeah, not the best thing. Okay, so here's the pieces of metal that are sticking. They move, but I can tell there's they're not floppingly loose. It might work like this. They certainly should be cleaned up. Get all the oil that might be on them. Off of it. The main bearing. Well, it's pretty. It's pretty brownish in here. Uh, but look, I mean, there's no lack of oil and gook down here. Not bad. You can see all kinds of moisture on the surface of this. So it has it has collected a fair bit of moisture. Okay. Uh, next step. I think we might as well take this off. We might as well do all the maintenance that we should do. And it's here in my shop. clamp uh oh I didn't put the bladder clamp on the last record player <laughs> I'll do that a little later oh dry as a bone in there little roller turns so interestingly enough it's a fairly good shape lubrication wise but you know it can't be perfect after all these years maybe it got some maintenance done to it at some point maybe 10 20 years ago or something I'm gonna guess that most of the record players I deal with have never received any maintenance attention little alcohol.
but I'm sure the odd record player did make it through some kind of maintenance uh, back in its uh, working days when it was uh, just a regular record player. As opposed to an irregular record player that this now is. These are pretty good to have, you know. Uh, something like this. You occasionally play records. You want to do it once in a while for fun. You don't want to put together a huge stereo system that you almost never use. Um, and this guy comes with a radio. It's an FM. The FM sounds great. So it can be used as a radio. And you're not playing records. That, maybe that fits. So I think these all-in-one units are pretty, pretty. I mean, you can pick these things up at yard sales and uh, you know used places and stuff like that for not much money at all. You know, aside from the uh, risk of the uh, cartridge being dead, there's a very high likelihood there's nothing wrong with this when you get a hold of one of these. pretty good. So I think I'm just going to put a drop of oil in there. I don't think I'm going to fiddle the grease. Look at the inside bearing surface on here. Doesn't look too bad. Great, my alcohol shooter is empty here. advantage of alcohol is it goes away. Now most of that has not come from the bearing surface, but just beyond the bearing surface where there's a little place in there for grease to hide. How'd that get back on there? Okay, here, you know, I'm just going to give them a drop of oil. I'm not going to put any solvent there. 
because it's already loose and turning. Just one drop of oil like that. loosened it up too. Good. Now this stuff isn't as gummed up as some so I don't have to worry too much about cleaning it. I see my old cat Tabby has joined me in here. probably leave these on and just put some alcohol down in behind it here if I can. Just soak her up in alcohol. My old cat Tabby has decided that living in the basement is ideal and she doesn't come upstairs anymore. And if I bring her upstairs she Hangs around for a couple minutes and then trots back down. Okay, so I want to try to get that between the plates. You know, I don't know if that's really going to clean it up. Yeah, let's let's go a little further here and take this off. I've seen these little metal pieces so stuck to this post that trying to loosen it up in that, all that happens is it actually starts turning this post and that's, you're on your way to ruining the record player at that point. You see, I can't take these apart to clean them really. So I'm just going to have to kind of hose it in there. And a good, you know, always good to drop these things once in a while. Teach them a lesson, make sure they know who's boss. And you don't want any of these parts to get it in their head that they are so valuable that, uh, you know, too big to fail type, type deal here. Definitely looks like some lubricant. Maybe WD-40 or something. Got in there. I mean, this is not easy to flush out this kind of stuff. I don't really know really how effective this is, but you gotta do something. must do something. Okay, so I want this to dry up. Put a spreader in it. Nope. Bending anything here. I'm just. And the plates are stuck together because of uh, 
surface tension. I don't think there's much surface tension on the alcohol. Okay, so they're a little bit spread like this. And I'm gonna stick it right above my soldering iron here. Just sitting above the soldering iron, getting hot. That'll evaporate all the alcohol. In the meantime, Regrease that. If you've watched lots of my videos, you've seen me do this many times. be that making sure that roller spins is more important than making sure this is uh, greased. And we need to grease the center shaft here. Cookout has gone pretty warm. A little too warm to touch here. Okay, let's see how loose it is now. Still not very good. That's what it should do. I can tell there's still some alcohol in there. Or something. Because when I uh, when I go to pull the plates apart, oh, I'm doing okay now. Hey, coming apart good. First they were kind of sticky from surface tension. Yeah, there's still something in there. Okay, so I'm going to give this a little bit of time to, to really dry up properly. And uh, I'll put that back together.